The Brown Betty is a design classic. It is one of the most recognisable shapes in British ceramics. It is so embedded in our culture, but there is very little formal history on the object. And I think that is because it is such a marginalised, vernacular, everyday object. It sort of disappears into the background. So part of this project was really to reappraise its worth, to reposition its commercial and its cultural value. We're at Nutton Quarry just outside Stoke-on-Trent where they mine Etruria Marl clay which is traditionally used in the production of redwares in the ceramics industry and particularly redware teapots, a tradition which has been happening since the 1600s. So the mining of this clay to make redware teapots is seen as a key catalyst for the proliferation of industry in Staffordshire. In the late 1600s, two Dutch brothers, the Ellers brothers, moved to Staffordshire. They were one of the first to refine the red clay, Etruria Marl, to make redware teapots in imitation of Chinese wares that were being imported by the East India Company into the UK. So it's really a global story, the genesis of this object. The clay that we use today is the same as what we've used hundreds of years ago and that I think put Stoke-on-Trent on the map and I think that was really the birth of uh, the potteries. When we get the clay in from the quarry, we mix this clay with water to break it down into a liquid slip. After that process then we will sieve any impurities that are in the clay such as gravel or sand before it goes on to the filter press to give us the cakes of clay that then go into the pug mill to be pugged into blocks of clay and then to be sold on. We're here at Colden Ceramics, so the oldest remaining maker of the Brown Betty teapot. They maintain a tradition of redware manufacturing which stretches back hundreds of years in Stoke-on-Trent and it's amazing to be in a place that still maintains that, that tradition. We employ eight people in the manufacture of the teapots. Um, from start to finish, it takes us about two days, from casting to firing to glazing to finished inspection. At the moment, we're making 150 teapots a day, but we are capable of manufacturing up to 250 a day. Through looking at the archives in Staffordshire, library and the pottery museums and art gallery i discovered you know this rich history of multiple makers working with this object the term brown betty or the term rockingham teapot describes a typology of object rather than a brand so there were multiple factories making it each adding their own innovations to the object so what you kind of got is this sort of slow evolution of ideas that is shared amongst a really wide range of people. Essentially, a sort of open source model. You know, they were all contributing to the refinement of a product through buying original vintage teapots online. We discovered, you know, many more features that that didn't appear to be within Calden's existing product. So we decided to re-engineer the object and reintroduce some of those patents and details. So some of the details we've relaunched are the, the non-drip spout, which was patented in the 1920s, the locking lid, which was patented in around the same time. There's an undercut in the neck that stops the lid dropping out, which also accepts the lid upside down and allows the objects to stack in the factory. The globe shape was seen as the best shape to infuse loose leaf tea. The Rockingham glaze hid tea stains, so the teapot was thought to last a lot longer. The return on the handle stops your knuckle burning on the globe. You know, every single aspect of this object is about pure function and, and not about aesthetics. It's been really interesting working with Ian on the design of his non-drip teapot. It, it causes uh, a number of challenges, but we overcame the challenges and we've produced many, many of his teapots now and they're sold all over the world. It's amazing to be part of the tradition of redware making in a way that, that seems in keeping with the evolution of the object. The Brown Betty teapot seems to be a very vernacular 
but democratic objects. So it's really been a reappraisal of this classic object.